guys, it's Amy here, and today I'm going to be doing my top books of 2014 so far. So I saw Sarah Churchill over at Clumsiness is a Curse do this video the other day and I thought it was a really good idea as I would love to share with you the books that I have enjoyed a lot this year so far and maybe this list will change once I come to do my top books of 2014 but who knows, we will see. I will leave Sarah's video linked down below if you'd like to go and see that. The books I'm showing today are books that I have read and enjoyed so far in 2014, not books that have come out in 2014. So let's get on to the list. First I have Dust by Hugh Howie. This is the third instalment of the Wool trilogy, first being Wool second shift and third being dust. Now if you've been around on my channel for a while you'll know that I really love this series. I think it is a fantastic adult dystopian trilogy. This follows the story of various groups of people who are living in a very volatile world where the entire world has been destroyed pretty much and everyone is living underground in giant silos. They are unaware of each other and they are unaware of how they came to be in the silos in the first place and how the whole destruction of the world kind of came about. So it's really exciting, really fantastically written and it's a really exciting trilogy so if this tickles your pickle then you should definitely pick it up soon. Next on my list is Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. Uh, along with that I also have Lola and the Boy Next Door which is sat back here. This is my new little shelf that I've created here that I'm going to be putting the books that I've read so far this month so you will always know what I will be talking about in my monthly wrap up. So Anna and Lola are absolutely brilliant and I cannot wait to read Isla and the Happily Ever After. This follows the story of a young American girl girl called Anna who goes over to Paris to go to school and she starts having feelings for another young man but this is a very tricky situation because he's already got a girlfriend and Anna's already supposed to be seeing someone as well so it's all kind of tricky. You may have heard me say it before but I'm not the biggest fan of romance stories, I just don't really like them and I don't really like romances being pulled into stories unnecessarily but I have fallen in love with romance recently. You haven't picked up anything by Stephanie Perkins yet, maybe because you are like me and you think that maybe romance isn't your kind of thing. I would definitely suggest maybe getting like a sneak peek or something online and see if you like the first couple of chapters because I found this really funny and really enjoyable and it wasn't all just like romance, it was like a really good story as well, which sounds really silly because obviously it's going to be a good story but I don't know what I thought romances were like before but this was really good and I really would highly suggest. Next on my list, and I'm sure it's on a lot of people's top favourite books of all time actually, and it is The Book Thief by Marcus Uzak, and this is an absolutely massive copy. I have no idea where I've got this from, but it is, I could clobber someone with this and do damage I reckon. I read this before the film came out earlier this year and I really enjoyed the film as well. This is a historical fiction based in Germany in World War II and the narrator of the story is Death. We follow the story of a young girl named Liesel and she is taken in by another German family. While she is there she learns to read and write and as the title suggests she steals books so that she can read to herself and learn to read more but there is much more to the story than that and I wouldn't want to try and explain to you because it is just too brilliant and you would need to read it to understand how fantastic it really is. I put reading this book off for a really long time and I'm really sad that I did that. I wish I had read it when I first picked it up when I was about 15 but didn't get around to reading it all. But then maybe I needed to wait until this age to really feel the full impact of this book. It was just phenomenal. I cannot explain the multitude of emotions and feelings and everything that I went through when reading this story and it's just fantastic. I can't explain it to you. You'll just have to go and read it if you haven't already. The penultimate book on my list is a classic by Jane Austen and it is Pride and Prejudice. This is the first book I've read from Jane Austen and I really loved it. I'm currently reading Sense and Sensibility and I'm really enjoying that one too. For years I had absolutely no interest in reading Pride and Prejudice and I hadn't seen the film, I hadn't watched anything to do with it, but earlier this year on Booktube there was quite a lot going on about Pride and Prejudice and how amazing it was and I kept seeing it pop up everywhere and I just thought, you know what, I'm gonna pick it up, I'm gonna give it a go and it was brilliant. It was so funny. Like, you wouldn't expect it. Like, I haven't read many classics that have made me laugh out loud as much as this one. It follows the story of Lizzie Bennet and her sisters and how they are living within the times and it is Lizzie kind of narrating how everything is going on and how their mum is kind of trying to marry them off to people and their mum is hilarious. She is one of the funniest characters in this book. What I loved most about this book was the sarcasm and the quick, like, witty replies and just everything was just so far ahead of its time. I think it was absolutely brilliant. If you're hesitant to pick up a classic or if you haven't read anything from Jane Austen yet, I would really highly suggest this one. And the final book slash author on this list is Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell and I read Fangirl earlier this month. I will be talking about that in my August wrap-up. 
yet again, Ella Ron Park is another budding romance type story. Although in this one I felt it was different, I didn't feel like it was a romance story, I felt like it was watching two people grow and become accustomed to each other and just everything about this story was beautiful and just the writing and the way everything was built up was absolutely brilliant. There's a bit when they were on the bus and they were holding hands and it was just the sweetest thing I think I've ever read. I'm pretty sure I actually cried when reading it because it was just so wonderful. What I really loved about this book was that Rainbow Rowell really tackled some really serious issues but didn't overcast them with the romance in the story. Like these issues had their own part and these characters dealt with these issues that they had in really brilliant ways and just everything about it was fantastically done. I'm not sure I can really give a good summary of this book so I think you'll just have to take my word for it and go and read it and just see how brilliant it is. Okay so those are my top five books of the year so far. If you want to see all the books that I've read this year so far then go and click on my Goodreads link and I'd be very happy to be your friend. My challenge and everything is on there if you'd like to see how I'm doing. Also if you prefer visual things then I will leave links to my Facebook page and my Instagram down below where I post pictures of what I'm currently reading and what I'm enjoying at the moment. Let me know down below which books you've really enjoyed this year or if you've read any of these ones that I've shown today and really enjoyed those. I think that's everything for today guys, I hope you're all having a fantastic day and I'll see you soon. Bye! Sean, unfortunately it just wasn't my kind of story. But this one, I wouldn't hesitate to say, is actually now my favourite John Green book. So